Welcome to Buy the Books, the podcast helping business owners navigate the complex world of business, tax, and bookkeeping. Now, to the owner and president of Sakhalin, Lindsay Klein. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This is Lindsay Klein with Sakhalin, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time, and your host of Buy the Books. I'm here again with Ryan Rudenberg. Thanks hey. for joining me again. I love it. It's our monthly visit. Your health <laughs> craftsman. That's correct. So, you and I... We haven't actually done this for a while because we've taken a little break f- during the summer. F- yeah, you went on recording. vacation. So <laughs> last time we had gotten together, we had talked about getting together for a test drive of Tesla. So we're going to we're gonna put a pin in that for now. Yep. And we're going to talk about what happened with that. So we'll come back to that. But there's a topic I want to talk about first, which I'm actually glad that you didn't do any research on this. Um, I had sent Ryan an email with some links to articles and things. And right after I sent it, I thought, you know, I probably shouldn't have sent him that because it would have been good to get his perspective without any context. And he didn't see the email. So it actually works out because now I can I can ask you some questions not having any context whatsoever because I'm very curious to get your perspective without sharing any information first. Okay. And that is the difference between a bookkeeper, an accountant, a CPA, and an enrolled agent. Okay. So not having any research or context, just speaking for the average person on the street, can you tell me what you know about those four types? Well, I'll just have to go educated guess on this okay. one. Okay. So the first one, what was it? A, a bookkeeper. Account, a bookkeeper. I, in my opinion, would be somebody that took care of a company's, the numbers, to make sure everything's straight and square and in the right buckets and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I, get, I believe an accountant would be somebody that would help advise you on your spending, possibly, like where you're spending your money, where you need to spend different money, but that could be bookkeeping too. Not really sure. <laughs> And then the CPA, I believe CPA has to do with financial planning, correct? Where it would help you. I'm not going to answer anything yet. I want to hear all your future. I think that's what a CPA would do. Would help you with your your finances as far as investing and 401ks and those types of things. And then an enrolled agent. Never even heard of that. Okay, that's good to know. know, Unless I'm an enrolled agent for healthcare, but in this context, no clue. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Never even heard of that. So now what about educational requirements? What do you think would be the educational requirements to be one of those four things? Let's start from the bookkeeper. The bookkeeper? Um, shoot, I believe there would be, I would expect there to be some sort of a license, a regulation, a certificate of sorts, I okay. guess. Okay, um, what about an accountant? I, I would put that in the same clump. Okay. And then I would believe a CPA would be licensed more like your Series 6, 63, 67, more of those licenses as well, and then I don't know the other one. The enrolled agent. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that okay. is. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else that you think differentiates these four things? No. I think it's a, a mush pot that most people interchange repeatedly. Yes. I would say even in the groups that I go and visit and different people, when I hear people talk, oh, I'm a CPA, accountant, bookkeeper, I'm like, okay, what's the difference? Like, yeah. I really honestly don't know. And I yeah. don't think I'm alone. Well, that, and that's exactly why I thought this would make a great topic. This is good. Because I get called pretty much all those things. I don't think I've been called an enrolled agent. I've been asked if I'm an enrolled agent. Okay. But I have interchangeably been called all the other things, for sure. So there is definitely a lot of confusion about the difference between these. So I thought this would be a good thing to talk about and unwrap the differences. Okay. Would it surprise you to know that a bookkeeper has no educational requirements whatsoever? Surprising, no. I I, I would think that you you could do it. I thought there would be some sort of a certificate for maybe client facing just to say, hey, I know what's going down. But there are certificates out there. It's not required. There's the AIPB, which is the I think Association. Oh, I can't even. But it's professional bookkeepers. Put a link at the bottom of the screen right here. 
Yeah, well, that would require technical <laughs> expertise that I don't have, Ryan. Easy. Anyway, well, you can do it for okay, me. Okay, let's do it. Anyway, I don't remember what the AI stands for, <laughs> but the PB stands for professional bookkeepers. Okay. There's that one. And then the one I'm actually trying to get right now is the D, no, C. DB, which is the Certification of Digital Bookkeepers. Okay. So there are certifications out there, but they're not required in order to call yourself a bookkeeper. So what's the benefit then of having those certifications? Just to have that initial next to your name to show the outside world that I have gone through some educational process. I've gone through the certification process. And if someone's familiar with the process you went through to get that certificate. Uh, I'd say the most prevalent one actually is the QuickBooks Pro Advisor certification because that shows that you are at least somewhat educated Mm -hmm. on the QuickBooks platform. Um, So that one's probably the most prevalent in the bookkeeping world. Okay. But someone can literally put up a sign tomorrow bookkeeper and have zero experience zero educational requirements okay anyone can be a bookkeeper um and that is where a lot of the problem lies a lot of the pain points that i hear every day from prospective clients that are looking for those services and they call me or visit our website and i'm meeting with them i ask them what are your pain points with your current bookkeeper and I really hear the three, the basic three things over and over. Timeliness, accuracy, and honesty. Mm-hmm. And honesty, if, if that's gone wrong, then it's usually a really sticky, messy situation where they've actually stolen from them, right? So these are the three areas that I hear all the time. And that's where I came up with that um, tagline, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time to tag, to, to, to address those three pain points that I hear most often. That's smart. But a lot of it comes from, I think, people not understanding that literally anyone can call themselves a bookkeeper and have no education, no background, no experience. Okay. Anyone can. So if you understand that, Then you can start asking, I think, more pointed questions about what is your experience? Have you taken any certifications? Do you have any education, right? Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a bookkeeper, start asking those questions and definitely ask for referrals, right? Okay. Okay. So that's bookkeepers. Then accountants. So accountants, not a whole lot different, actually, but you're not really supposed to call yourself an accountant unless you have at least a bachelor's degree. Okay. So in finance or in accounting, is it specific? You know, that's a good question actually. Like is it I just should math pull up one of these or? articles. <laughs> Accountants have at least a bachelor's degree, although it doesn't have to be accounting. Okay. So there you go. So literally you can have a a bachelor's degree in animal husbandry and still call yourself an accountant okay so there you go (laughs) yeah um so that's why i say it's not a whole lot different from a bookkeeper but at least you should have that bachelor's degree before you're calling yourself an accountant okay um now accountants tend to usually make more in salary income than a bookkeeper usually because they have more education and they tend to usually have an accounting degree okay now i have an accounting degree from the university of north texas so i can legitimately call myself an accountant okay so not just a bookkeeper an accountant then you've got a cpa well let's stop for a second okay what was the difference between accountant and a bookkeeper. I don't think we talked really, about Really, that's, that's so it's about just the, it. The, the, the bookkeeper doesn't have to have anything where the accountant has to have a bachelor's degree. Right. So you do, in your job with Sucline, you do the exact same thing an accountant does. Yes. Okay. Now, okay. accountants can do other things, but so could bookkeepers. Okay. Right? So what... A bookkeeper could be doing more financial analysis. And you mentioned earlier, like looking more into, you know, spending or bookkeepers could do that as well. Okay. So, um, you know, 
I feel like bookkeepers and accountants, they could be doing more or less based on their experience, their knowledge, their background, what responsibilities they're given, okay. the mentorships they've had. Um, I think, like I said, accountants tend to make more because they've had that education that a bookkeeper probably hasn't had. So if you've got a bachelor's degree in accounting, why didn't you position yourself as an accountant versus a bookkeeper? Is there a benefit from one over the other? If you say accountants make more than Are you talking me specifically? You specifically, yeah. Um, for me, in my case, and I really thought about this because there are a lot of people that don't like the the word bookkeeper. They don't like being called a bookkeeper. And a lot of people call me bookkeeper because that's what I've positioned myself mm -hmm. as, even though, quite honestly, I do very little of the bookkeeping myself, right? I'm the business owner. I have a team of bookkeepers. Um, but when I got to thinking about it, I didn't want there to be any confusion about what we did. That's really what caused me to land on being very specific about bookkeeping because when you say accounting people tend to think taxes mm -hmm. which in reality in the accounting world accountants when we say accounting we know that's different from taxes but gotcha. the populace at large when the populace says accounting they're usually thinking taxes okay. and we don't do taxes we do sales tax but that's the only taxes we're doing so I figured if I position myself as an accounting firm, which I will say that if it's a group of accountants, because they'll understand what I mean. Um, but if I knew if I did that with the everyday person, immediately they're thinking that I do tax returns. Okay. And I didn't want to have to constantly clarify that. Um, now, some people still think that, even when I say bookkeeping. But by and large, when I say bookkeeping, people understand that is a separate thing from tax returns. Gotcha. And that is the main reason why I decided to position myself as a bookkeeping firm. Okay. That makes so, sense. You so, don't yes. any questions about taxes. But you still do, don't you? Yeah. No, I still do. <laughs> I think I asked you. I, yeah. I still do get questions about taxes. And then I, you know, explain the difference to yeah. them and that we don't do that. But I do also network with a lot of tax people so I can find out their situation and say, hey, I know someone that can help you with that, you yep. know. So that's that's the biggest reason why okay. I did that. That makes sense. But there's really honestly not a whole lot of difference between a bookkeeper and accountant other than that that bachelor's degree. Okay. And oftentimes accountants have a higher level of responsibility just simply because of that. Oh, and so. it also makes sense. You, you said something that you're the business owner, obviously, and you have a team of bookkeepers. So if you made it all accounting, then it would be a bachelor's requirement for every that single staff member. Right. So it kind of it shrinks the, the staff that pool, is true. too. That so is. that makes sense. And if somebody wants to move up or right. get a bachelor's degree, it's all good. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's kind of cool. So then you've got the CPA. So the CPA, that stands for Certified Public Accountant. I get called a CPA all the time when I've never, ever, ever positioned myself as such because I'm not a CPA. Mm -hmm. um, but it's funny to me how me calling myself a bookkeeper, people automatically equate that to, oh, you're a CPA. No, mm -hmm. no, definitely not. CPAs actually have quite a bit of um, educational and a test requirement. Now, the test for this to get the CPA, it's the AI CPA. So let me look this up. American Institute, and that's what the AI stands oh, there for. We go. American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, AI CPA. That is the organization that gives this certification that does you know organizes the test and everything and that test has actually four parts there's actually four different tests that a, the, a candidate has to take to pass this test audits and attestation attest i can't say this word attestation uh, there we go <laughs> financial accounting and reporting regulation business environment and concepts so those are the four Jeez. parts um each individual exam, they have to get at least 75 points on it. Um, if they take one exam, they have 18 months to finish the other three. 
So you basically have a clock of 18 months to get all four of these done. Um, and then after they get it, let's say they get all four done, they still have to keep up continuing education on this. Yep. So to keep their license or to keep that certificate, they have usually up to 40 hours a year or 80 credits every two years to keep their certification. That's a lot. I only have, what, 24 hours and then eight hours of something yeah. else like ethics or something like that. Yeah, it's that's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. In addition to that, before they can even sit for the exam, they have to have anywhere from six months to two years of accounting experience, and they have to have 150 hours of college, and I think it's up to 30 hours of graduate college. Jeez. Okay. So most CPAs have a master's degree, because if you're required to get 30 hours of a a graduate program I could be wrong but that's basically a graduate degree. yeah you're not going to go there for a week right <laughs> so most CPAs that you come across are going to have a master's degree and typically they have a master's degree in accounting because sure. they have to have accounting classes um, so they have a huge education requirement they have a huge CE requirement and then a very hard test a lot of people do not pass these tests the first time gotcha. it's actually kind of rare for someone to pass all these the first time so a huge requirement now an enrolled agent which you said you hadn't I'm gonna compare these two an enrolled agent also has a test that they have to pass, but they are administered by the IRS. That's actually an IRS certification. Okay. So the CPA's exam is administered by the AICPA, an, an organization, a private organization, whereas an enrolled agent, that's the IRS. And CPAs, by default, are enrolled agents because basically the IRS says if you've gone through the CPA process you are an enrolled agent so enrolled agents have a, a test requirement just like the CPAs do but it's all tax related it's all IRS because okay. IRS is the one doing it right so it is 100% tax whereas we just read the CPAs did any of those say tax nope not a single one auditing and attestation Financial accounting and reporting, regulation, which is probably where the taxes come in, but that's broad, right? Regulation yeah. could entail a lot more than just the IRS. Business environment and concepts. So that's the difference is the focus there because the enrolled agent is 100% IRS regulations and tax. So with an enrolled agent, just mainly deal with your taxes then? Yes. M only. Well, Pretty much. They, I mean, they that's may, all their education. Well, but, they may do other things. Sure. That, you know, enrolled agents could have a wide berth of experiences. And, so they're in the things. same bucket as a CPA where the bookkeeper and accountant are in the same well, kind of family. Actually, I would say enrolled agents are typically, you know, again, they could have a wide berth of experience and other things, but typically an enrolled agent is solely focused on taxes. Okay. A CPA, if... If you meet a CPA, and I, I go to a lot of CPA conferences, CPA groups, and I'll ask them, hey, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if you ask that to an enrolled agent, they probably would think, that's obvious, I do taxes. CPAs, that's not the case. A CPA could be um, somebody that does, well, auditing, mm -hmm. um, which is a completely separate thing from taxes. Um, public companies, like you love Tesla. Mm -hmm. Tesla is a public company is. that that is on the public stock exchange. Yep. They are required to have an audit done by an outside accounting firm that does auditing. They have to. They're required as a public company to do that. Is that every quarter? Or do they do that annually? I don't know the exact requirements. I think so, question mark. I just didn't know if they did it when they did financials, when they did quarterly I know financials. it's at least once a year. Okay. But I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that. I, I know I know they issue their, their public um, financials, so I'm guessing they do because they have to they have to publicize their financials oh, yeah. quarterly. Big time. So I'm guessing it is on a quarterly basis, okay. but I'm not for sure I just sure didn't know if they did a review maybe annually. Is that for the SEC just to make sure that yeah. people aren't fudging numbers, that right. internally they're not fudging right. a forward-facing? And those requirements got a lot stricter after Enron. 
I'm sure. So the socks um, regulations came out after that, and a lot of things changed. Um, prior to that, you could have both your accounting and your auditing done at the same firm. Now, you cannot. If you're a public company, it has to be two separate firms. Which, it makes sense. Checks and balances. So, right. Yeah. And that's a lot of what happened with that Enron situation was because it was all under one roof and a lot of corruption going on. Yep. So if you have two different firms, you have two different groups of people that would have to be in collusion for there to be corruption. On Probably that not likely. So a lot less likely yeah. anyway. So a lot of things have changed since then, but... A CPA would be one that does that auditing, which has nothing to do with taxes. Okay. That's completely separate. In fact, if you go to take an account, if you go to do an accounting degree and you end up going to get a graduate accounting degree, you will have to choose whether you want to do tax or audit. They, okay. ha- they actually choose one path or the other because the classes are going to be focused around one or the other. Um, CPAs also might be doing like CFO type work where they're doing analysis, you know, and actually helping them with ratios or, you know, projections, forecasting Mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Again, nothing to do with taxes. CPAs could be in just a wide range of different industries and different types of jobs that have nothing to do with taxes. So uh, let me clarify something, at least for my brain. You said that you were talking about CPAs when they do forecasting, correct? Mm -hmm. So with uh, accounting or bookkeeping, there's no type of forecasting. You're just dealing with Well, they could be. Do you forecast and stuff or look at that or say, hey, based on trends or... We do not in our firm. In your firm, but some do? Some, yes, okay. yes, absolutely. There are bookkeepers out there that will provide those type of services. Just based on run rates, so this is what your trend has been over the yeah, years, yeah, and this is probably exactly. where you can forecast that mm-hmm. this expense will be, because it's been even yes. or whatever. It's like, okay, yeah. all right. I've just made the decision for my firm to keep our services pretty narrow and stay in our lane. Okay. Now, we have teamed up with some fractional CFOs that will take what the the financials that we produce and they will translate them for our clients but they're a completely separate firm doing it under their own umbrella okay um so i make those introductions and say hey you know if you want this service they will take we can send the financials to them and they can do that but we're not doing that so cfo services that's a really a completely different thing from bookkeeping okay now there are bookkeepers that provide cfo services but that's not bookkeeping. Okay. It's totally different. Gotcha. Um, but there's a lot of CPAs that provide those type of services. In fact, one of the CFOs that we partner with is a CPA. But there's also a CPA I work with that I've had on the podcast before, Steve Hannibit. All he does is sales tax, Texas sales tax. Okay. That is all he does. Very focused on one thing, which is fantastic. Because anytime I have a Texas sales tax question, yeah, you got to go. I guy. call Steve. <laughs> Steve, help us. So fantastic, but that is completely different from IRS income taxes. Yes. Like I would never ask Steve an IRS income tax question because he would probably say, "Uh, I don't know." Yeah. There's a lot of CPAs you could ask a tax question, and they would say. I don't know. (laughs) Gotcha. Okay. So that, I think, is the biggest misnomer I hear is that people assume if someone has a CPA, they know taxes. Okay. And honestly, I would say most CPAs don't. So what is the tax term? If you're looking for a tax person, who do you ask for? Well, you're looking for either a CPA or an enrolled agent. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just put an asterisk on this. There are a lot of people that can file tax returns that have no CPA or enrolled agent. There are, you know, anybody can set up a tax shop. You see them on mm-hmm. the corner, right? People out there with their yeah. Well, we all do our their own Statue so. of Liberty, right? Yeah. But there are professionals yes. that can set up a tax shop, you know, in April in, and stand in on the corner, yeah, right, exactly, yeah. and they could have no, like you can file for. I think it's a what do they call it? A PTIN number with the IRS to file on the behalf of other people's mm-hmm. tax returns and have no experience whatsoever. So you don't have to have these things. But I would suggest 
just erring on the side of caution that you would get either a CPA or an enrolled agent that specializes in income taxes. Gotcha. Okay. Now, a lot of CPAs do specialize in income tax returns. There's a lot of those out there. Is that the same for business too, for small business taxes? Yeah. They do oh, that? Uh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. So there are definitely CPAs that do taxes. There's no question about that. But basically the, the, the point I'm trying to hit home is there's a lot of CPAs that don't gotcha. know anything about taxes. They passed the test. They knew enough to pass their test. And then they never thought about taxes again. Gotcha. I've talked to many CPAs that are like, oh, I don't even do my own taxes. Like <laughs> I look at my tax return like, uh, no, you handle this. And yep. they give it to another CPA. So that's the biggest misnomer, I think, about CPAs. Now, an enrolled agent, that's different. An enrolled agent, which, like I said, that is the IRS giving out that certification. They have CE requirements as well. I don't know how much it is, but they have to keep up their continuing education to keep that enrolled agent certification, and it's all taxes. So they have to keep up with the current tax situation, what's going on. I mentioned I had gone to CPA conferences before. Mm -hmm. So I am often sitting in CE classes, even though I, as an accountant, without any certification, I have no CE requirements. Mm -hmm. But I'm often in these places because I want to network with these people that are in the room. And it obviously is advantageous for me as a podcaster, a business owner of an accounting firm. I need to make sure I'm keeping up with what's going on. Yep. Some of these classes that are offered are ridiculous, quite frankly, that that they get CE credit for. Some of them are leadership or there was one, and I actually went to it because I was so curious about it. It was like studying body language. Okay. There was one where it was a guy that was a magician that was doing a magic show while teaching, but it was all soft skills, right? Okay. And some of these classes, I'm just sitting there going, how are you getting a CE credit towards a certified public accounting certification (laughs) for listening to this magician talk about body language? It's it's wild to me. It happens in the health world, too. I had, you know, my licenses came up at the end of 21. I had 33 licenses to renew. That was fun. Oh, wow. Um, But yeah, I had to do what the 24 hours of CE and the eight of, you know, business ethics or whatever it is. And there's courses you can go online. I think I got it done in like two hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it's like you just... So, yeah, it, it can be kind of funny. A lot of the things didn't have anything to do with what I was doing. Uh, and I'm like, why is this applying towards anything? So I think yeah. it's industry-wide. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, all right, just get it done so we can charge you money. All right, so I wanted to look up, and I just looked up the requirements for an EA, enrolled agent. <clears throat> so they have to par- pass a three-part exam. It's all based on taxes and tax laws. They have to complete 72 hours of continuing education every three years. Okay. So that that's the difference between them and the CE requirement. Was that 24? It's basically 24 hours a year. Essentially, basically what I have to do, you just have three years to knock it all out. Yeah, that's what it sounds like every three years. That's a lot. So, yeah, they still have quite a bit of EA requirements. And I don't know if EAs can get, you know, take the same classes that the CPAs can. I'm not sure on that, if they have different requirements. I wonder but if it's because the tax code changes so much that they need so so much yes, education. Yes, I'm sure that's exactly there's why. Changing. There's always changes. Yeah. And there's been a lot of changes these last few years. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, that is something that if you if you were to just walk away and not, not keep up with it, you're going to be so out of touch with what's going on. Yeah. So yeah, you have to keep up with it. Makes sense. So, but yeah, you would want to make sure whoever you have doing your taxes is actually taking classes that are teaching them taxes. Yeah. <laughs> That's scary that anybody can just open up and say they can do your taxes for you. Oh yeah. Because that absolutely. can really mess you up. So now that I've told you that, what how do you feel about these different four categories from whenever you walked in here? 
Oh, 100% more clear. Okay. I know who to ask for now. now there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. That's good to know. So that's that's basically what the objective was then, for people it. to understand kind of the differences between these things. So is there an order of operation in which it would make sense to hire these people? Like, you know, if you, you would, you so is it, would it be necessary to have a CPA and a bookkeeper? Well, you would want somebody doing your income taxes that, again, I yeah. my suggestion is you have a CPA or an enrolled agent that specializes in taxes. taxes. And then you take care of all the books. And a bookkeeper, I would not, me personally, would not have doing tax returns. True. Um, now, there are bookkeepers that do taxes. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of them that do taxes. But I personally would want somebody that has the certifications, the CE requirements, the educational requirements to do that. There you go. Makes sense. I'm not saying that there aren't bookkeepers that can't do a great job at it. There probably are bookkeepers that do a better job at it than some CPAs and enrolled agents. True. I absolutely believe that. But, um, you know, just be careful with that. You know, just know if you do have a bookkeeper doing your taxes, that there is no educational requirement. There is no CE requirement. Mm -hmm. You know, this person is probably, probably self-taught which is perfectly fine if they're, you know, again, some of these CE things that they go to, yeah. the, the other guys, <laughs> um, may not be helping them in the least. So the self-taught bookkeeper may be more educated than some of these CPAs, you, you know? So I'm not, um, I'm not dissing them necessarily. Just be careful and make no, sure. I would, I would be somebody that chose somebody that stayed in their lane. It's like this is yeah. what I do. It's yeah. Like, okay, you're really good at that. Right. Yeah. And that's that's exactly the 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 strategy I have taken with my business. I have a lot of people ask me, well, why don't you do tax work or why don't you do accounts payables or you know all these different things that we don't do? And I just have chosen no. I just want to stay. You know, yes, our service offering is pretty narrow. But I want to get really good at that and stay in our lane and then refer out to people that specialize in those other things that are really good at doing those. Gotcha. So that for me personally has been the path I've taken. So hopefully that clarifies oh, for totally people did. I the I had difference. no idea. I mean, obviously you saw my answer at the beginning, no clue. That was completely <laughs> off. But I think that was good because yeah. I really was curious to see what you would say. It's having probably no the context. pulse of most people. But um, if... You know, we mentioned Tesla earlier being a public company. Public companies have way more requirements. Yes. You know, most for most of the podcast, in fact, every podcast episode, I'm speaking to a small business owner that doesn't have SEC requirements and all of that, right? Yep. But public companies have way more requirements. So they would definitely want to make sure that they've got top-notch people because, you know, one mess up can cost oh, yeah. so much in fines and penalties and public public distrust. Your yes, talk, your stock will take a right. beating. Right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. That would be bad. So on the Tesla topic. Uh oh. Last time you and I <laughs> we had talked about how we were going to go do a test drive, and we yeah. actually did set the appointment. We did. I had to have your help with that. Because I, I got frustrated with it. Like, I have well, it very... snafu'd and then it went through. I think it just went through because I, don't I didn't know. even do anything. And you're like, oh, it looks like it's booked. I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, I was like getting frustrated because I have very little patience. And I was like, Ryan, just do it. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, but we got it booked. We got an appointment set. And then I got a voicemail from Tesla saying, I'm sorry, we're canceling your appointment because we're about to sell all of the test cars. Yes. So that was a big wah wah. Yeah, <laughs> that's a bummer. I was we were so excited, like we were going to do social media oh, video yeah. and record ourselves. Yeah. In fact, Jeffrey Gonzalez said he was going to come along yeah. with us because he wanted he to be a part of this. I'm going to um, find one. We're going to find another one. Hopefully, they come back online soon. So what you told me a theory you have. Talk about that. I do about have a what theory. they're doing. So they did um, fully construct, and and the Austin Gigafactory is fully operational and they're moving a lot of their actually all of their 
their North American, not all, that's not true, most of their North American production of the Model Y to Austin because there's such a big backlog. But what they've done is they redesigned the structural pack for the base of the vehicle. And this Austin Gigafactory was tooled to build those specific vehicles. So what I think they might be doing is selling off the current inventory of test drive vehicles to replace them with the okay. new refreshed 2022 Model 2. Now, it doesn't look any different from the outside. You couldn't tell anything just by looking at it, but the structural battery pack all at the bottom with the two castings is being implemented uh, for mass production. So they do create those vehicles in California as well, but I believe that their focus is shifting to the new everything. I think you missed your calling I as a Tesla <laughs> salesperson, yeah, Ryan. I know. <laughs> but the, here's the deal. There are no Tesla salespeople. <laughs> well, the, the guy that I guess gives you the keys... Is there keys in Tesla? Mm -mm. No. Okay. No. So you can either there's a there's a little backup credit card like little type thing. So when you walk up close, but the most common thing is through the Tesla app. When you when you download the Tesla app, you take that little key card they give you, and you literally just drop it in to where the where you would rest your phone because there's an auto charger there and a Bluetooth. So you just take the card out and you throw it up in the center console and it connects the Tesla to your phone. So you can have different settings. Literally, you know, say you're a single mother, a bunch of kids, you go to the grocery store, you can set the Tesla to literally open up the trunk and both doors as you approach it. So you don't have to use your hands to get in the car. Wow. So there's a lot of different things that you can (laughs) do. Fancy. So fancy. Not a car, it's a robot. In Austin, are they doing test drives right now? Do you know? No, because there's no um, there's no public access to the the Gigafactory. It's it's massive. It's still massive. They don't have a showroom in that area. No, no, no. They don't need them. Of course, they don't need they, them. They they literally don't. It's every time somebody buys a Tesla, somebody rides in that Tesla, and then that person wants to buy a Tesla. So that's why they have no advertising, no commercials, no Super Bowl commercials. They're not in video games. They're not in anything. They do not have an advertising. They have Ryan. They That's have all they need is no, Ryan. No, they have fans. And we actually talked about that this weekend. We went to some networking stuff, and we talked about creating raving fans. Yeah. And Tesla is should be the case study on how a company can create fans through market. Well, not through marketing, just by creating product to deliver their message nationwide with literally spending zero dollars on marketing. None. They have That's nothing. That's pretty cool. Never. They never have, and they never will. So I need to figure out how to do that in bookkeeping. Yeah. Because I don't have fancy credit cards and doors that yeah. open up automatically. Uh, but I got to figure out how to translate that into the bookkeeping world. That's the age old question is how do we do that? Yeah. How can one person do that? But it, it's, it's possible, but it helps when you have such an intriguing product. I agree. That is, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty fancy stuff. It is. But the question is still, how are the cup holders? I don't know. And now I'm really, I'm not going to literally go under their stats to see. I need the, I need the dimensions of your cup holder. Yes, here, here it is here, right? No, no, no. What are we it. looking like? It Six goes inches? With me everywhere. I, I maybe think three? I think it's maybe four, four three. Okay. Four and I'm a half, have to maybe. Check. I mean. Or what I'm going to do for you specifically, I'll build you an insert that fits into the cup holder that comes up that has a base big enough to fit your water. My husband (laughs) tried that because I complained about his cup holder so much. He bought one of those and it didn't work out very oh, well. Oh, is it the little ones that expand and they're supposed to like grip on the side, but then your stuff falls? I remember well, those. Well, yeah, it just, it, like, it didn't work very well. Like, yeah. it still <laughs> fell out. And the other problem is, is, is the big insert going to cover up your controls? No. That's the other issue. There's no controls in a Tesla. So, when I tell you that I'm a cup holder snob, <laughs> I've heard. We've talked about it. It is literally the most important thing to me. So I ended up with a Chrysler Pacifica because it holds my giant hydro flask. How are you liking it? So far, so good. Good. Except one thing that's really weird about this car, it seems to be a little possessed. After you turn the car off, there's this clicking sound. It's just like... And it goes for probably a full 60 seconds. Hmm. And I thought something was wrong with it. And when we took it back to the dealership, they're like, no, it, it's just, it does that. It's just like winding down. I, I, I don't know what the deal is with it. But it's like cooling or yeah, something. I, apparently. Like so you get this cooling. clicking for 60 seconds or so after yeah. you turn it off. I don't know what is up with that, but I have a clicking car now. 
Well, that's fine. I Why will say this, password? though. It is better than the possessed car I got rid of, my Honda Odyssey, which just randomly, arbitrarily, whenever it felt like it, would start t- doing the car alarm. Oh, that's not good. No, especially when you're in Pilates and yep. you're in a stretching position and all of a sudden the car just decides, this is a good time. Yep. And then I got to fumble around and go find my keys and turn it, it was, off. It was losing power. So what was happening is the alarm, because I used to install car alarms, that it was losing power and then coming back online and setting the alarm off. Well, we thought that might be it. So yeah. we replaced the battery and people told me replace the battery in the in the fob, yeah, right? No, that's not what no. it was. It actually ended up being the sensor. Something was wrong with oh, the really? sensor huh. in in like the engine area. Thankfully, I finally had someone that that got on YouTube and was like, oh, I'll fix this for you. I used to be an engineer and they did something in the front w- with the sensor in the oh, engine. You can fix anything on YouTube. And, but you know what's funny is that didn't happen until about a month before my car got totaled, right? So up until that point, I was dealing with this possessed car alarm that was driving me crazy. It's inevitable. Last time I totaled a car, I had but put four new tires on it like a week before. Yeah, right? And then they're like, give me credit. Right? They're all, no. And it's like, yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I just Isn't that sick? I get you. I feel you. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, so at least I, I found the car that will hold my cup holders, and that's the most important thing. And it and it doesn't arbitrarily decide to to start honking. So yeah. that's also a huge plus. But yep. but one of these days we're gonna make the Tesla test drive happen. We we're gonna gotta, do it. We just gotta make sure because there's they've been closing down stores as well too because the showrooms they just they just don't need them. Or maybe we just need to find somebody that owns a Tesla. We yeah. could just test drive somebody's or, car. If you ever go down, because I know you do a lot of networking trips down in yes. San Antonio and Austin, is yes. Hertz rents. Really? Yeah, they rent Teslas. They bought, uh, it was a while back, maybe five or six months ago, they put in an order for 100,000 Model 3s. And I've seen YouTube ads all the time come wow. to Hertz. You've seen the Tom the Tom, uh, the Tom, Tom Brady commercials with him plugged in. And no, his I don't watch in the, commercials, Brian. <laughs> the parking, well, I watch commercials on YouTube because that's that all I watch. That is so though. funny. But yeah, Tom Brady's on there. He's in the parking structure with a little battery pack plugged into his chest and he's recharging. <laughs> so it's like the Hertz is like going all in on the, uh, yeah, on the on the. Okay, that's vehicles. good to know. So if I need yeah. to rent a car, then yeah. that's that's. And the then you can also it. other examples that you can do is you can actually request Teslas when you do Uber or Lyft, mm. uh, because a lot of those drivers are now switching over to Teslas because even though there's a rental fee for that because they saved cars specifically for those to rent them, and I believe last time I heard it's about three hundred and thirty dollars a week um, to rent the Tesla for Uber drivers, Lyft oh. drivers, Grubhub, but and a lot of people go, Whew, well. That's a lot of money, but drivers are saying the amount of money that they're saving on gas alone I can is actually offsetting the the cost that they're causing to rental. So their net margin off of the deliveries of the drives of the rides has gone up about thirty to forty percent by renting a Tesla wow. or by renting. I, you could literally rent an electric vehicle. Uh, there's not very many others out there, but Tesla. Well, yeah, I mean, here in Dallas, Texas, yeah. gas right now as of this moment is about five dollars a gallon yeah. which and is I, I know crazy. we keep crying because my parents live in southern california and it was over seven. Oh and my so God. Oh, you know we're over wow. here griping i'm like mom i know that i'm I no, i have no room to gripe but five dollars for us i've never seen that here no, like not not never. So, never and so i know you live in the five dollar world every day but for us man okay so i'm turning 40 next month okay. so i've had what 30 something years well 20 something years of drive life mm-hmm. when i I was 16 i remember paying 75 cents a gallon yeah and now it's five dollars so in 24 years yeah we've gone from 75 cents to five go back that far two years ago when covid everybody stopped driving in the height of the shutdown and the lockdowns yeah what did gas get down to like a dollar nine a dollar nineteen. I don't think it was that low. It was pretty I think low. it was about a dollar ninety. Maybe I maybe. used my Kroger points. I don't know. Okay. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. Where do you low. get gas? Because I didn't see it that low. <laughs> it was pretty low. I think one ninety nine was probably the cheapest I paid. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. It was so, pretty. It's way less than it is way, now. Yeah, that is right. That I think is it was costing me twenty now. bucks to fill up my car. Now I got my 08 little Jetta, and it's like seventy. I'm I like, know. Really? Isn't that crazy? No. 
yeah, it's, it's so bad. It's painful. Yes. So, yeah, I think Tesla is probably getting really popular now. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, there's, a, there's, it's, you know, like the um, uh, exponential growth. It's, it's here, you know, for the past, you know, since 2008, when everybody was laughing and laughing and laughing, and they weren't selling and they weren't selling, and then 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 6,000 cars delivered. Well. You know, last year they delivered just shy of a million vehicles. Wow. And, you know, they're on pace. If it wasn't for the lockdowns in China, they'd be on pace to hitting about 2 million vehicles wow. delivered this year. So it's not going to slow down. Okay. Well, we're going to make it happen. Yep, One of these days, awesome. Ryan and I are going to figure out yep. a way to make this video where gonna we're going to check out the cup holders and test drive. And, and I'm going to find one. This going to be my mission. <laughs> <laughs> how far? All right. So if people want to find you, Ryan, how could they get a hold of you? The number one ask I have actually is you actually can go visit my YouTube channel. My YouTube yes. channel is at Your Health Craftsman. Um, and I'm currently at 90 subscribers. Yes. I know it doesn't really matter, but I'm really trying to get to 100 so that I can change uh, the description of my channel to Your Health Craftsman and not have it generic. Yeah, so um, I have him up right now, and he's currently at 90 subscribers. You're 90. so close, because you need 100 to change I it, I need 100. Right? Yep, they won't let you change it. So just, he just needs 10 more people to get in there and subscribe. Yep. And you can find me on all social media using the handle Your Health Craftsman. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram, all using that handle. Um, yeah, and that's, that's the way you can get a hold of me. All right. And yes, people, while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to the Buy Your Books YouTube channel as well. We could also use your support. And I'm looking for a sponsor. Ryan, I'm having trouble finding a sponsor. Okay. Let's put so, on a sponsor ask. I, I need anyone that's listening. If you're interested in sponsoring Buy the Books, you know, you can get your name out there, put a commercial in even. Um, yeah, I, I need to, I need ass. to, I need to pay for this. I need it to not be a business expense anymore. Yep. So, I mean, that's me just being completely transparent. So we learned that this week. Yeah. We did. So I actually am going to change it from being a weekly podcast to being a monthly podcast. Okay. And that's just strictly to cut the, the expense down on it. But if I could find a sponsor, then I can you know bring it back up to a weekly podcast it's I just gotcha. you know just trying to figure out where's the most advantageous which actually the the biggest reason that i started this podcast was i wanted a place for people to be able to get to know me mm -hmm. um because it's a sensitive thing to turn your books over to someone 100 percent. and we've talked about how there's no educational requirement i'm going to bring this full circle right yeah there's no educational requirement to being a bookkeeper so how are you going to know? Like you mentioned, how will you know if this person is somebody that you should trust or put put your books in their hands? So that was really the main objective I had to starting this podcast is here's a place where I can talk about what I do, how I do it, talk about my experience, share stories about my experience. I can talk about my team. I can talk about our processes mm -hmm. and talk about my education, you know, what I know. So basically someone now could get on our our podcast platforms and learn more about Lindsay Klein than they ever possibly wanted to know. <laughs> They want to know a lot, girl. You're good. <laughs> so I think I have enough content at this point that I'm saying, okay, if I go to a monthly podcast, there are still, how many do I have? I don't even know how many videos I There's have. There's a lot. There is quite a few. You're, you're probably creeping on Does 60 it say to... anywhere on YouTube? Does it show how many? I believe if you went under your studio, you can see total number of videos. Oh, see, now you're you're ex you're going further <laughs> than my... You could also, on the tab, try to click the videos tab on your channel to see if it has a, 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 a account at the top. I just went to Apple Podcasts instead because I, I know it shows it there. So I'm at 75 episodes Ooh, right now. I almost had it on the... I, just, I was thinking in my head about 75. Yeah. 60 so, to 75. So yeah, as of right now, when we're recording this, I have 75 episodes up. So there's enough content now where people can definitely get to know me as much as they want to get to know me. Absolutely. So yeah, you got to, yep. So anyway, all that to say, I'm putting it out there. I need a sponsor. Okay. Um, and that can look a lot of different ways and we can talk about that. So if there's any companies that are interested I definitely am interested in talking to you. 
And of course, if anyone needs bookkeeping services, we're here for you at Sakline. You can reach us at Sakline.com, S-A-K-L-I-N-E.com. Um, you can email me at info at Sakline.com, I-N-F-O at S-A-K-L-I-N-E.com. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Until next time, have a great week. By the Books is presented by Sakline. Honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time. For more information on Sakline services, or to get a hold of Lindsay, visit Sakline.com or email info at Sakline.com. The information provided on this website and podcast does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and materials available are for general information purposes only. Information provided by Sakline may not constitute the most up-to-date legal or other information. Listeners should contact their attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal matter and should refrain from acting on the basis of this information without first seeking legal advice from counsel in the relevant jurisdiction. Only your individual attorney can provide assurances that the information contained herein and your interpretation of it is applicable or appropriate to your particular situation.